welcome back to Sunday Night Spookies, the podcast dedicated to exploring the mysterious and the spooky unknown. My name is Lex. And I'm Sarah. And this is episode 11, The Lost Colony of Roanoke. So today's episode is going to be pretty history heavy. Uh, I am a history buff. If I wasn't going to be a musician, I was going to be a history teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know what The Lost Colony of Roanoke is, it's the... Basically, it was like the first attempt at colonizing the New World from England before Jamestown. Um, it was tr- it attempted to be established in 1587. <laughs> About 115 people were sent from England to colonize North America on the eastern coast, just off of North Carolina. Again, the colony would have been the very first permanent colony of the New World had it been successful. It's one of America's most notorious mysteries in history, and many have come forward with some pretty outlandish and weird theories about why the settlement failed and what happened to everybody that was left there. So in 1585, the queen sent some explorers to go explore the outer banks of the east coast of North Carolina, what's now in North Carolina. Among them was a man named John White, who would later be the governor of Roanoke. And they went to find basically if the land was good enough to hold a colony. And they found lots of fruit, lots of wildlife, fertile land, a lot of water nearby. Obviously, it's an island. And so they sailed back and was like, yep, we're good to go. And there was a couple of trips like this where she sent like just two or three ships to go explore these islands, these outer banks of North Carolina and Virginia around there. On one excursion, the explorers encountered the Native Americans. And to much surprise, the natives kind of, well, reportedly, welcomed them with open arms. They were very curious. um, And it's reported that the first encounter happened because a native came up to their ship and just was like, hey, I'm curious. Right. Obviously wasn't in that language or like that, but... (laughs) All the journals that they have from these people said a a native man just came up and tried to communicate. One brave dude. After that, they kind of set up their own way of communicating with them because neither one obviously could speak either of the languages. So they set up their own like communication. They traded. The natives showed them the land, showed them the fruitfulness of the land. Um, And actually, they had two native men, again, supposedly volunteer to go back with them to England to meet the queen. And they brave. Yeah, and it, like it happened. There's like documentation of that the two men actually did go to England. And that was kind of what push, pushed the queen even further to, yes, I want to colonize. If there's people living here and living successfully and having happy lives, let's do it. So the natives were later returned. Again, like I said, there was a few excursions of explorers that just kind of went back and forth from this Outer Banks to England. And the two native men were returned. So like I said, Queen Elizabeth was very pleased that there was fruitful land and happy people there. So she then set out seven more ships to go explore. And the total, it was 600 men. The leader of this expedition was a man named Richard Grenville. Grenville was not so keen on the native people. He kind of, it was like walking on eggshells because some of these men had been here before. They were men that were on previous excursions. These men knew the natives from previous interactions and were very, hey, I know you, look at my stuff, let's trade, let's communicate. And they were very, uh, they had a very like sharing relationship, a very open, kind relationship with the natives. Mm -hmm. And Grenville didn't like it so much. So much to the fact, (laughs) at one point, like I said, they did a lot of trading together. There was reported a time where one of the natives took a silver cup from the Englishmen. And now there's a lot of dispute whether it was actually stolen or under the pretenses of this was a gift or this is what I'm trading with you. I kind of think that it was like a gift or I'm trading type. Like I'm, 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 I'm quicker to believe that it was the native that took it. Well, if they've been trading this whole time, why would he all of a sudden just take it? Right. They And, and then that's what all of the documents have said and all of the journals have said that they were like this extremely friendly, loving people that were, they had loving relationships with each other, like actual friendships. Grenville was under the impression that this native stole a silver cup from the English. And um, his response was he set fire to their tribe and all of their crops and burnt everything to the ground. <laughs> that 
little overkill. <laughs> a little bit of an overreaction, I would say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what else would you expect yeah. from a colonizer? <laughs> <laughs> so a few months after this incident, uh, Grenville returned to England. And after that incident, things with the natives were not so good. There wasn't any more reports during that time, those few months where it was like extremely hostile and there's like wars breaking out, but we're not on good terms anymore. You burnt all my shit down. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. not happy. Um, he returned to England for more supplies. Um, it isn't, I don't, I couldn't find what the supplies was, but just more supplies for his men, whatever. He took 500 of the men with him and left 100 there. That's a lot of men to take back with you. That's what I thought. I I was, it, just to leave 100 men in let's, this unknown. Let's colonize, but we got to run back really quick for a couple of years to grab some stuff. I think it was only a couple months. <laughs> but still. But still. But, but let's still. take over half. Let's of, take 90% yeah. <laughs> or whatever of the colony back to where we came from. Right. That doesn't make sense to me. And That's his fine. his orders weren't so kind either. He, like I said, he went back for supplies, whatever he needed, took 500 men with him. They had on the island a big like earth mound fort that they had made like fences around. Um, there's actually some pictures online of like drawings of it. It's actually kind of cool looking um but he left 100 men at the fort (laughs) and their task was just to survive the winter i'll be back in the spring if you can survive the winter we know it's a good place to colonize (laughs) (laughs) great leader great leader however the winters were harsher than they were in england and the men were not prepared for it i kind of think this is really silly because grenville went and returned to england for more supplies but then left these men here like survive the winter Mm-hmm. Even though we're low on supplies. Uh, right. I just thought it was kind of weird. But they were very quickly running out of food and all of the necessities they needed. So they turned to the natives and they tried to make peace with the natives. They were like, hey, sorry our leader sucks, but we're dying. Mm-hmm. So the chief of the tribe that they had communicated with prior um, is a very forgiving man. And he said, okay, you can, we'll help you will share our food we'll we'll, you know put you up for a little bit um however the natives were already running low on supplies and food because grenville burnt all their shit down (laughs) so they had no food stores for the winter right um and the chief quickly realized this and then moved his tribe completely off the island they just moved the whole tribe moved and left the englishmen there and they left for just the winter like the natives moved from for the winter the hundred men from what we can find survived um they had to resort to eating all of their dogs and their pets and I mean they didn't eat each other but the poor doggies <laughs> um, you can't see my facial expression right now but know, it's not good. That, know that it's that of utter disgust and yeah. disdain <laughs> so that kind of sucks but the hundred men did survive but now they were extremely revengeful of the natives who abandoned them because they didn't put them up for the whole winter just a few weeks so they set out to go find these natives and once again <laughs> broke out into attack and they actually went and beheaded their chief in front of the tribe again a little bit of a it's a a big oof yeah definitely shouldn't have done that shouldn't have done that very forgiving guy Mm -hmm. like burn all my stuff down and then you burned all his crops down he didn't even do anything to you no besides leave you alone yeah and And then they come back and attack The Englishmen ended up being found by a pirate before Grenville returned. So along this time, there was ships just kind of roaming the seas because Spain and England were not at good odds at this point. And so a lot of the times these ships from England, the privateers would just kind of stop here and check out what's going on. Like, hey, we know you're trying to recolonize. Let's stop by and see how they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of these privateers ended up stopping. The hundred men jumped ship and went back to England before Grenville could get back. Grenville did return shortly after that, found no one there. And he was so desperate to please the queen and so desperate for this colonization to work that he left 15 of his men there again. Stay here. You go back to the fort, even though it's abandoned. 15 guys, you stay there. And those 15 men were completely unaware of what had been previously started with the natives. They had no idea what Grenville had did, and they had no idea what the last 100 men just did to these natives. And this is the time when Roanoke was now officially started. The 115 people 
that were sent by Queen Elizabeth to, with the, the sole task of colonizing this island, arrived in August of 1587. They also had no idea what was going on with the natives at this point. <laughs> and there, they were supposed to meet up with the 15 men that Grenville had left there and add them to their kind of colony, their group. However, the 115 that were sent to colonize Roanoke that were supposed to meet up with the 15 left by Grenville, they didn't find those 15 men. They found one skeleton and the fort was completely destroyed. So we're, we assume that the natives kind of took over a little bit. Mm-hmm. Rightfully so. The, <laughs> the captain of the ship that delivered these 115 people there kind of just said, well, you're on your own. Not, oh, come back. We'll go back to England. No one's here. Everything's destroyed. There's a skeleton on the beach. Whatever. He's just like, no, I got to go back and plunder some Spain ships. Yeah, so. this ain't a taxi. No. So he <laughs> basically had them like swiftly unload all of their stuff on the ship. So much so that 90% of the stuff was damaged. So all their building materials, some of their clothes, some of their utensils, like all of the things that they would need to live there, a lot of it was damaged. They were also left in a war zone with the natives that they had no idea about. And at one point, one of the colonists was killed while he was trying to fish for food. And so they didn't want to leave the, the fort area where the fort had previously been. They were like terrified to leave the area because they didn't know what was going on. <laughs> didn't know why they were being like picked off. Eventually, John White, who had been here previously on the first expedition that was here, ended up finding one of the native men that he had brought back to England. And that guy was friendly to John. He knew who he was. And he, John kind of in their, in his own way communicated with him and said, hey, I don't know why these guys are so hostile, but it's a huge misunderstanding. We're a different group. Be my peacemaker. And the native agreed. He's like, okay, I'm going to, I think they scheduled a meeting for August 6th. This all happened like <laughs> in a week. Right. Um, they scheduled a meeting for August 6th. However, John didn't hear anything back. The, that one native never came back. He never heard anything from the other hostile tribe. So like, you know, a normal rational person, he took that as they mean war. <laughs> mm-hmm. So John gathered up a few of his men and went and attacked at night the tribe. However, he attacked the wrong tribe. <laughs> I, okay. He attacked the tribe that was friendly towards them. There was, and this this was the tribe that was on Croatan, which will come up later. So the friendly tribe was on Croatan Island, which was right next to Roanoke. And then the hostile tribe was like around Roanoke on the same island or very near, I don't know. But the Croatan natives were the ones that were friendly. So after several weeks of pleading with the Croatans, they ended up coming to an agreement that yes, this was a whole misunderstanding. We didn't mean to attack you. And things kind of settled down with that tribe again. As soon as they made peace with these tribes, the 115 people, or now 114, we think, they elected John to go back to England for more supplies. Because like we said previously, they had damaged 90% of their supplies that they had taken from the ship. And it was August. It was too late to plant any crops at this point, too late in the season. So the colony was looking pretty dreary at this point. So John left his wife, his daughter Eleanor Dare, and his just-born granddaughter on the island of Roanoke to return in three months with supplies from England. They did set up a little bit of a system, though. They said, John kind of told the colony that if you have to leave, if you have to move, give me a sign. on a, Carve it into a tree. Leave me something to tell me where you go, whether it be a direction, a title of something, something. Furthermore, he said, if you have to leave in a hurry, if you are under attack, put a cross above whatever word you leave me on a tree, whatever. You know what I mean? So John left for England and he left at a really bad time (laughs) because England had then, as soon as he got back to England, um, England had declared war with Spain and Queen Elizabeth had ordered every single ship she could get her hands on to use in her naval armada against Spain. And John's attempts to return to the New World were denied. He was not allowed to leave. There was no ship that would take him. Nobody would defy the queen. John waited three years in England to return to Roanoke. He had attempted to leave twice and he failed. I don't know if like weather got to him or he was caught on a ship that he was supposed to be and they took him back. We know that he attempted to go back twice and failed both times. So, 
Three years later, he was finally able to return. The war with Spain was over. So he set sail for Roanoke. When he got to Roanoke, however, he found nobody. Absolutely nobody. Not even the houses. All of the houses were disassembled and taken down. Not like no, no lumber was left. Absolutely nothing that he could see was left on where he left his settlement. The only thing he found was the word Croatan carved into a fence post or a tree. There's like conflicting, conflicting stories on if it was actually like a post of some kind or it was a tree. He also found the letters carved into a tree C-R-O. Now he took this as a great sign at first. He's like, okay. They went to Cro- the island of Croatan where the friendly natives were. And he's like, there's no cross above the word. That means they didn't, they weren't under attack. They didn't have to leave like in a super hurry. Probably just ran out of resources and needed help from the natives. He was like, great, let's let's go to Croatan. He searched the island a little bit and he ended up finding five buried chests with books, papers, belongings. He actually found a suit of armor that was his that was in a chest, five chests along the island of Roanoke. But most of the stuff was completely damaged on the inside of these chests. So he goes back to the ship and says, they went to Croatan, let's go. And the captain of the ship, again, being another privateer, said, nope, I'm going to go plunder some Spain ships. I don't know why they were so obsessed with pirating Spain ships, even after the war was over and they had won. So the captain told John that he was going to spend a few weeks at sea trying to make some money privateering to return to Croatan. However, they never did. After his few weeks of privateering, he returned to England with John. And John never returned to Roanoke. That's the last that he ever saw of the New World. He never returned. There is like journals of his where he's like, there's excerpts of him pleading with God to give him a sign or to let him know what happened to his family and the colony that he left behind. And like, you can tell like from, from some of the journal readings that he was like tormented until his death, that he never, and he died very shortly after he got back to England after this last trip. Um, but he was very tormented that he never, never knew what happened to the 115 people. That's crazy. Yeah. He I left I his think wife and his kid there. His wife, his daughter, and his granddaughter. She was born on Roanoke, like just a couple months after they had like started the colony she was born. Yeah. Even the houses were gone. Like the houses were completely disassembled. Yeah, I saw that too. Like they they weren't burnt down. They weren't no. ruined. They were taken down. Yeah, disassembled. And there was not not even any bones left behind either. Mm-mm. I read that. Not so that they time. just like really disappeared into thin air. Apparently. Or maybe they didn't. Or maybe they didn't. Let's find out. So to start, there is some discrepancy over whether or not the word Croatoan or Croatan is the appropriate. Yeah. I The or documentary if, that I watched about the lost colony of Roanoke said Croatan the whole time. And everything that I read said Croatoan. So take so, with a grain of salt. <laughs> sorry, sorry if we're wrong. We think that they're interchangeable. Yeah. It's like when we Google it, it's look, people use the terms interchangeably. Yeah. So, sorry if we suck. Note that. Yeah. (laughs) There are some theories about what happened to the people in Roanoke. Mm -hmm. The least likely include being abducted by aliens or having a small zombie apocalypse. I've heard that a lot. The The zombie. I've heard the zombie one a lot. I've heard the alien one a lot. I've heard like, especially because like when I was in high school, this was... I don't know why. I don't know if like a documentary of it came out when I was in high school, but so many people were talking about it when I was in high school. It was a big deal. And there was so many people that were so convinced that it was like one of the first ever alien abductions and could have been. I don't know. But <laughs> listen, <laughs> that's a very big theory. Mm-hmm. Some people think that they might have been killed by Spaniards who marched up from Florida. Very true. Right. They were very already true. very possible. They were already pissed and they knew that they were there. Mm hmm. Especially because so. all of the queen's ships were after Spain. Right. A- even after the war was over. Like, that was the whole, the whole documentary kept mentioning all these captains of these ships that, like, dropped these people off and was like, see ya, I'm going to plunder. <laughs> right. What? I'm gonna go mess some, some shit up. Yeah. It's also believed that they might have tried to sail back to England, but got lost at sea. I think that would have been hard to do if they didn't have a sh- ship. ship. They would have to make, like, canoes. And and they would die. And yeah. Like, you would not get, I don't think. I don't think you'd get very far in the ocean on a canoe. On a homemade canoe. Yes. I don't think you would get very far. Um, but I think if that did happen, 
I don't know. I think it's strange that they would leave the word Croatoan or Croatan. On a tree. Right. If they set sail. Right. It wouldn't make sense. No. They could have died of a fatal infectious disease. Mm -hmm. Very likely. Yeah. So so I've read before that disease was like super heavy in the Mm -hmm. colony between these like 115 people. Yeah. And like you're in a new in a new place, new land around new people. Mm hmm. Very For likely sure. to have illness spread. Yeah. Either way. And some, like, virus you've never had before. Your body is just like, nope. This is a no from me, dog. Peace yeah. out. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, there is some thought that maybe they resorted to cannibalism. I've heard that, too. Yep. Because, like, the first recorded instance of cannibalism in the quote-unquote new world was in Jamestown, which came after mm-hmm. Roanoke. And they, there was cannibalism in Jamestown. Mm-hmm. So it's not really too far-fetched to think that there would be cannibalism in Roanoke when they're running out of supplies. Likely. They ate their dogs, man. Yeah. They're not... We're not we're not here for moral standards. They <laughs> ate they ate their family pets. Yeah. <laughs> but the only thing about that theory is what about the houses? Why would they like... They mat- took them all down. <laughs> meticulously dissemble their houses and then one man just eats everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, or do they just like start a pecking order and everyone just like ate the person below them? I don't know. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. There's also the possibility that the colonists were killed or abducted by the natives. Mm-hmm. I think killed is less likely because then there would have been a cross on the tree. Because well, if, they, if she had time. Yeah. I mean, they weren't walking around with like rifles, you know? Not really. I mean, I'm sure a few of them had brought them, but how much ammo do you have? You know what I mean? Right. Like, to hunt and to whatever. But again, the houses. Would the natives assemble their houses so meticulously? You wouldn't think so. Or maybe. Or maybe they wanted the, resor- the resources. Maybe. To cover up. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. It's all a cover up. The aliens <laughs> did it. <laughs> the aliens and the zombies did it. <laughs> well, the most likely explanation would be that the colonists were absorbed into the friendly tribe mm-hmm. and that they assimilated. And that would explain the Croatoan or Croatan carving on the tree. Because mm-hmm. they're like, oh, we gotta, we're gonna go with these people mm-hmm. and assimilate. Through that assimilation and intermarriage over many generations, the natives and English could have formed a third group called the Lumbee tribe. The Lumbee tribe today is native to North Carolina, but they don't have a certain lineage pinned down. There's Hmm. no, they don't know. But the tribe's oral history links them to Roanoke settlers and like in native culture, that's how their story gets, like their history gets passed on. Yeah. Telling stories. Um, Their history links them to the Roanoke settlers, and that idea is supported by some of their surnames and their ability to write and read in English. The documentary I watched, it was on YouTube, but they also talked about, like, other natives. I don't know how they got the information or, like, if it was document how it was documented, but they, one of the theories in the the documentary was that the, the colony just kind of, like, went off on their own and took what they learned from the natives and also, like, stayed kind of English. Like, there was reports of English-looking natives, like, blonde hair, Mm -hmm. blue eyes, natively dressed, but living in two-story colonized houses. And, it like, it just sounded so weird. And the documentary was like, that's probably not likely. I mean, it could... Maybe not in that way, Mm -hmm. but it could have... I mean, after a couple of generations. Right. And And after the, like all of the trouble of Mm -hmm. starting the colony. And if you did go to, you know, Croatoan or Croatan and get help from the natives, wouldn't, I I would think that you would, you would take on board their way of life almost. Yeah. Like they can live here better than we can. We have some stuff that might be better than their tools. Like you said, let's just assimilate. Mm -hmm. Uh, So family names of the Roanoke colonists are Dial, Hyatt, and Taylor, and those are shared by Lumbee tribe members as early as 1719. Settlers who met the Lumbee tribe were astonished to find that Native Americans had gray eyes and spoke English. So that's kind of similar to what you said about the Native Americans having 
blonde hair and, and blue eyes looking and, different yeah yeah that's really interesting the Lumbe tribe kind of questions their connection and i don't know if they question it because they don't want to be associated <laughs> associated with it or if they just really aren't sure but they actually like researchers and like historians that are looking into it are calling it the Lumbe connection oh so they're just they don't know for sure they're just that's put, the most putting two likely. and two together and really hoping for four i think yeah i can see that in 2007, efforts began to collect and analyze DNA from local families to figure out if they were related to the Roanoke settlers or local tribes or both, but they never really got anywhere with that. No. They started taking DNA and then just couldn't really find anything else about it. Well, that's annoying. So I don't know, <laughs> so I don't know if they ever came to a conclusion or if they gave up on a conclusion, but... They did start, or maybe they're still looking and they just haven't found anything. I don't know. Maybe they haven't found anything yet. In 1937, an Emory University geologist was walking down the hallway when he bumped into a middle aged man carrying a rock. A rock? Yep. <gasps> the man, no. yeah. <laughs> he explained that he was a tourist who just found a 21 pound stone near the North Carolina Virginia border. He was just lugging that thing around? Just lugging it around. <laughs> and he, well, Damn. he was looking for someone to explain. The markings on the gray surface. Okay, okay. So the team of Emory scholars sat around, tried tried to figure out what this carved message said. What they found was a gut-wrenching plea from a grieving daughter to her father, and it detailed the bloody murder of her husband and child. Oh. <laughs> and so they're like, holy crap, this just solved this, like super old mystery especially because there was only one child on roanoke only one child i mean only one documented but it was john white's granddaughter eleanor's daughter yeah so the writer claimed to be eleanor dare who is john white's daughter mm -hmm. and it was addressed to him was it in like code is that why he needed it to be deciphered or was it just like so withered i think it was looking at it it appears to be in English. I think it was just hard to read. Mm, okay. We'll post a picture of it on Instagram so you guys can see. The carved letters basically read, Father, soon after you go for England, we come hither. And it said, The colonists suffered two years of only misery and war that led oh. to the death of more than half of the settlers. She said that tragedy struck when Indian shamans warned that the spirits were angry and all the remaining English, save seven, were abruptly killed. Among the dead were, quote, mine child and her husband, Ananias, to slain with much misery, unquote. Poor Eleanor. Mm -hmm. She said the dead were buried four miles east of this river. <laughs> Just this one. With their names writ all there on rock. Okay. So does that mean gravestones? Did they refine the gravestones? Or the bodies? It's a, the tourist said he found the stone 50 miles inland from Roanoke Island. 50 miles inland? That's what it says. And Well, there was... In the documentary I watched, there was some speculation that they didn't go to Croatan. They moved inland. Off the island. Right. But, again... Who knows? Right. Okay. The Emory team declared the stone's message to be authentic, and it became like this giant archaeological discovery. Mm -hmm. But soon after that, they became skeptical of its authenticity after the tourists could not be located, the tourists that originally found it. Oh. It was transferred to a college just outside of Atlanta. That's strange, because... There wasn't, like, a reward out, like, oh, if you find anything about Roanoke. I mean, not that we know of. Like, Unless he just wanted some, like... Publicity? Fame or something. But then why did he disappear? So, they thought that it was real. They thought that it was fake. But now... Now? it Well, rewind. It was dismissed for decades as a forgery. It was signed EWD for Eleanor... White Dare. Mm -hmm. And in the inscription, it hinted that there was other stones that could be found. That's when they 
offered the public a bounty for, oh, okay. for, for the discovery of any new stones. So they offered this bounty, of course, a thousand whatever stones start popping up because people want this extra bounty. Of course, yeah. And I think it was about $500 is what they were offering and so they start popping up and people are like oh here's these stones that i magically found in the woods that definitely has all of a sudden just recently but when they were looking into each stone trying to make sure and authenticate them they found words like primeval (laughs) but that word never like wasn't a thing yet no it wasn't invented yet so they're like, okay, well, thank you for this worthless pile of rubble. Yeah. <laughs> for real. Uh, we're going to get rid of it. Can't even have it back. We're just going to, we're going to keep just, it, thanks. <laughs> right. Basically, people believe that the original Dare Stone that spoke of murder of her husband and child, child is true. Okay. Widely believed. Ed Schrader, who is a geologist at a university in Georgia where the stone is kept, says that if the stone is real, it's the most significant artifact in American history of early European settlement. And if it's not, it's one of the most magnificent forgeries of all time. Right. I mean, there's no way to prove that Eleanor did that. Well, the type of English that they spoke, like writ, only misery and war and the way that the way that they spoke it, because when you really read it, in the way that it's written out, it's confusing. I can read it because phonetically it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But like they mention in this article that that type of English was only spoke for spoken for a hundred years. Okay, and so they're pretty sure it was it's authentic. Mm-hmm. But that's that's how they if they fi- ever find any of the other stones. They're going to be able to decipher it because the wordage, the spelling, Mm -hmm. the lack of filler words. Yeah, I get that. Because really, it's soon after you go for England, we come hither only misery and war, toe year, ye salvages feign spirits angry, Sudain murther, all save seven, mine child, Ananias, to slain with much misery. That's a mouthful. <laughs> so they, they only spoke that type of English for a very short period of time. So unless this dude that found the stone or whoever he got to do it, if it was a hoax, they had to be pretty well versed on types of English spoken in the 14th century. Right. Which is kind of rare, I think. I'd like to believe it's real. I think that it's real. I don't know. Well, they... There was a lot of talk in the colony of if everything, anything was to happen, leave us a, a sign, leave me a message or whatever. And he didn't return for three years. Right. So and if that happened to me, I'd be like, I got to leave this dude a message. Like, what if he returns someday and we're not here? Right. I have to document this somehow. Especially because it, there was so much pressure and so much hype around the new colony and colonizing the new world for a while. Like, after Roanoke, they didn't try for Jamestown for quite a while afterwards. But I I would think that the desire to leave something behind would be so strong. I don't know, man. What do you think happened? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the most <coughs> logical answer is they assimilated with the Croatoans or Croatans. Just because before John left for England, that they had made peace with that tribe again or attempted to thought they did but the complete disassemble of the houses and not finding them anywhere else it, it, it looks well, like a choice right well they never went back to Croatoan John never went back sure there's no documentation that they went back to Croatoan so maybe they were living a happy life on Croatoan or Croatoan whatever mm-hmm. who knows they never, they never went back which I think was a dumb move yeah John <laughs> talking to you <laughs> <laughs> I just you know like, it would be cool to believe that they got abducted by aliens or yeah. just simply yeah. disappe- disappeared off the face of the earth. Or that the right? zombies took over and disassembled the house. <laughs> right. <It laughs> or just... that they ate each other. Right. Well, because that's what's spooky, right? Yeah. But right. 
I think they assimilated because that's what you do when you're... That would be the most... Yeah, the logical yeah. thing to do. Especially when you're in a tough spot like that. Mm-hmm. Who knows? That's... Yeah. It's, a, it's still a mystery. We don't know for sure. No one really knows it's for sure. It's still mysterious. Well, I know. Like, I've seen documentaries before where people were, like, scouring Roanoke Island. Right. For things. Looking, yeah. Well, looking for artifacts or and, whatever. And, or pottery or any kind of sound. Like the chests that John had mentioned. Because he wrote those in his personal diary. So they, they knew that they had existed. And people were trying for a long time. There's ex- excavations of, like, the beach and mm-hmm. the, the places that they had mentioned. And so, who knows? Maybe we'll never know. Well, someone will know one day because archaeology is a thing. Yeah. So And you know what? If there's no archaeology on it, did it even exist? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it never existed. It never existed. No, no. John White was figment of the Queen's imagination. I think that's the real answer. <laughs> never existed. So we want to know what you guys think. What do you believe happened to the lost colony of Roanoke? Do you think the stone is real? Do you think they ate each other? Or do you think it never existed and it's all a figment of our imagination? <laughs> That's the most likely. Yep, most likely. Let us know on any or all of our social medias. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at Sunday Night Spookies, on Twitter at Sunday Spookies, and on Facebook at the Sunday Night Spookies podcast. We also have a few links in our description box. I want to give a quick shout out to a awesome woman named Sandy. Um, I met her through one of my friends, Sarah Wilson. Hey, girl. Um, hey. Who <laughs> who helped us with our links. I had no idea that the links were wonky. And uh, I kind of feel bad for being an idiot and not actually checking them after we put them in our show notes. <laughs> so thank you, Sandy. If you're hearing this, that means your advice worked. And I am forever grateful for you. We have our PayPal link in the description box below. Now we don't expect any donations ever, um, but we are two broke college girls who would love to keep the show going and would love to investigate some really spooky places. And a lot of those aren't in Michigan, which means they cost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so if you feel generous, if you'd like to donate to our cause, we promise that all of it goes to stuff for the show um, and adventures for the show, places to go, places to investigate, equipment to investigate with. Um, we also have a few links for the spirit box we use, the EMF detector we use. Those are affiliate links we do get a small portion small kickback of what you spend as well as our links for bus sprout and instacart i hate getting groceries uh i usually order instacart where i can have my groceries delivered right to my door um so if you use our link we get a small kickback and you also get something as well um and our bus sprout uh bus sprout link if you want to start your own podcast if you have a passion for something if you just want to talk to yourself in your basement like we are doing right now uh <laughs> if you sign up for podcast again we do get a small kickback um but podcasting is fun we enjoy it so you can stay safe in your home yeah stay safe in your home in your basement recording on a microphone and you don't need any fancy equipment to do it so if you want to use our links we greatly appreciate it again nothing is ever expected if you want to buy the spear box we use and you want to just go to amazon yourself without using our link please by all means buy a spear box do some spooky investigating safely but those are our links and we thank you very much if you donate or use them at all thank you yay we hope you enjoyed this episode of sunday night spookies join us next week where we recap our on location investigation of the trevor city state hospital oh spooky new episodes are released every sunday evening Thank you so much for listening, and as always, stay stay spooky. And that would... (laughs) Please take a break from your regular (laughs) scheduled program to listen to my washing machine. It's a beautiful tune. (laughs) Anywho. Nobody contacts us. <laughs> Talk to me. I need friends. We just want to know what you guys think about stuff. Yeah. And no one tells us what they think. No one comments on our stuff to tell us their, their opinions.